Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. We are here at Edison High School for the Register and Reflectors in Schools Debate Series. We have several candidates from the Berlin Milan area, and we are so excited to be here. We have a full room of students. They have questions ready to ask the candidates. And before we get started, I want to thank BGSU Firelands, our main sponsor. I'd like to bring up Dr. Stephanie Walls, Professor of Political Science and Associate Dean at the college. Good morning. On behalf of BGSU Firelands, I'd like to thank the candidates, our audience, and the Sandusky Register for hosting and participating in today's event. I am Dr. Stephanie Walls. I am Associate Dean for Academic and Student Affairs at BGSU Firelands, and I also happen to be a political science professor. So as you may know, when it's time for voters to make a choice, party identification is a huge factor. And so what that means is that our Republican voters look for Republican candidates, Democratic voters tend to vote for Democratic candidates. But what does that mean for us in a local election where the candidates and issues are likely nonpartisan? It turns out there's a number of factors that help us make that vote choice. And today we're going to focus on two, candidate character and policy positions. So by character, one thing that you're going to be learning about today is something about these people. Do they seem like good people? Do they seem likable? Um, do they seem generally helpful and that they would make good decisions and show good judgment? We'll also be learning about policy positions. So what types of issues and solutions are these people likely to pursue if given the opportunity? Debates like today's event actually give you an opportunity to get to know the candidates for yourself, and that is invaluable. So whether you're eligible to vote now or will be soon, you'll find that debates like these are so helpful in helping you become educated in the candidates and the issues so that when it is time to vote, you can make an informed decision. More than just the the community's college, BGSU Firelands is our region's university, and we are very proud to be sponsors of today's event. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Walls. At this time, I'd like to bring up Junior Ivy Cluding for an introduction. students, candidates, and guests to the 2023 local election debate. Thanks to our sponsors, Baker on the Square, Burnham Orchards, and All Styles Landscaping for making the event look and taste as good as it will sound. Thanks to BGSU at Firelands, Kenyon College, Mr. Goodwin, and the Sandusky Register for entrusting Edison High School political science students to organize and carry out such an important event. Welcome candidates Greg Cumston and Dan Frederick, running for Milan Township Trustee. Mary Bruno, running for mayor of Milan, Berlin Heights Village candidate Joseph Myers, and running for township F fiscal officer, candidate Zach Rosberg. In a moment, the candidates will get to introduce themselves. Thank you for coming here and for teaching us today. We are excited for this great honor to host the 2023 debate. We are particularly grateful to host this event today because each of us in attendance is excited about our government class, and some of us even know the candidates and their families very well. Let's thank all the students out there too who have put in a lot of time and collaboration to make today's event meet the high standards put upon us. We owe some gratitude too to our democratic processes upon which elections and ultimately our freedom rest. Campaigns and debates leading up to free and open elections are hallmarks of our nation's democracy. We are participating in that today. Many around the world cannot enjoy this right, and most of us, in fact, despite our learning, have never participated in the political process either until today. Abraham Lincoln, along with 300,000 Ohioans, defended what he called our sacred institutions and the processes by which every American citizen has the right to be protected in his or her right to vote. The antebellum period reflected grave threats to our democratic institutions. In a debate of his own in 1854, Lincoln said that a house divided cannot stand. It must become all one or the other. FDR echoed Lincoln in the next century when American institutions were again threatened by the fascist menace. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And yet we endured. But look at us here this morning, all assembled and mixed up between moderates, liberals, and conservatives. All friends, peers, teammates, and neighbors. Our own sacred institution is our public school 
founded on common ideals of tolerance, civic institutions, intimidation-free and honest elections, and town, hall, town halls and debates like this. At the conclusion of the event, you're invited back to our classroom in 202 for what else? Just like the election of 1840, good local cider. Just a reminder to silence your phones. The moderator will announce when students may come up and ask questions of the candidates. Once again, thanks to all of today's participants, guests, and students. I now turn it over to Andy Oriel of the Sandusky Register for the rules and procedures of today's debate. Thank you, Ivy. So for today's forum, what we're going to have is we're going to start with an opening statement, which is going to be 90 seconds, and then we're getting right into the student questions. Each candidate will have 60 seconds to respond, an opportunity to rebut for 30 seconds. About halfway in, we're going to cut that response. Candidates will have 30 seconds to respond, 15 seconds to rebut, and then a closing statement. I just want to remind everybody that this program is available at SandowskiRegister.com and will be on our YouTube page. So please make sure you share that out. I also want to thank Aaron Caldwell, our executive producer, for producing today's video. Brandon Adio, our community editor, will be giving timing cues. And when you hear that bell sound, please wrap up your comment. And Joey Gioello is here today, too, our new education reporter that we'll be covering. So without further ado, we are going to get into our opening statements. And we're going to start with our mayoral candidate. And just for context, we did invite the other mayoral candidate. She declined that invitation, so just want to make that clear. But we're going to start with our opening remarks from Milan Mayor Candidate Mary Bruno. Thank you, Andy. Um, thank you, uh, BGSU Firelands, the Sandusky Register, Mr. Goodwin, and students for this opportunity. I look forward to it. And good luck to your girls' uh, golf team today at State. That's exciting. I have lived in Milan for over 30 years. I have two daughters. Both are both Edison graduates. They played sports here. They were National Honor Society. They got great educations here. I have an accounting degree. I love numbers. Um, for over 20 years, I have worked in accounting. With, I have accounting experience with almost 17 years in governmental budgetary fund accounting. I am a recent graduate of the Ashland Leadership Program, which is a 10-month program that develops skills, knowledge, experience, necessary to be a facilitative leader focusing on political, economic, business, and government services. I am running for mayor because I am unhappy with things that I have seen, and I have done my homework, I attend meetings, and I feel I have other uh, suggestions or ideas that maybe will help the village financially. I have also started a Move Milan Forward Mayor for Ma Mary for Mayor Facebook that I hope you will follow. I've been chronicling issues, concerns, and questions, and I will continue that through the end of, up until the election. Um, I work at Ashland County West Holmes Career Center, and I am happy to be running for mayor in Milan. Thank you. I want to introduce our next candidate, Zach Rosberg. Zach is running unopposed, but he has graciously offered to come here today. And Zach is also an Edison High School graduate, and he also coaches various teams here at Edison High School. So, Zach Rosberg, Milan Township Fiscal Officer. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, thanks for putting this on. Uh, it's a good opportunity. I know uh, it, it was local elections that got me interested in, in politics early on. My mom served on the school board for a number of years when I was your age um, and just you know some of those things really triggered my interest in local politics so hopefully uh, as you guys progress in your your careers uh, you know it's it's one of those things that you're willing to to give back and make your community stronger um, as Andy said I graduated from Edison uh, 2007 uh, some would argue that I never really left as I've kind of coached cross-country and track and been involved in and many different things uh, since, since graduation, um, but you know the school definitely gave me gave me the opportunities to succeed, and uh, so uh, you know I, I personally enjoy giving back and in the things that I'm passionate about. Um, after high school, I went to the University of Akron and got my master's uh, undergrad and master's in tax there, uh, which allowed me to sit for the CPA exam, and I became a CPA uh, while working for Deloitte in Cleveland. Uh, realized that the you know, the, the small town feel was much more for me and moved back and uh, have served as Milan Township Fiscal Officer. This is uh, my third term that I'm running for now, so I'm finishing up eight years 
And uh, it's, for me, it's just an opportunity to use those skills and, and give back and you know, keep, keep our township budget in a, in a good spot. Thank you. And we have both candidates from a contested race today for Milan Township Trustee. And we're going to start with the incumbent, Dan Frederick. Thank you, Andy. Uh, I'd like to say that Milan Township is operating smoothly and serving our residents well. So it's been my honor to serve as a Milan Township Trustee for since 2012. And as he said, I'm seeking re-election for my fourth term in office. Over the past 12 years, Milan Township Board of Trustees has initiated many significant improvements while maintaining a high level of services and solid fiscal management. Our roads are among the best maintained rural roads in Erie County. Our volunteer fire department is also among the best with highly trained firefighters using the best equipment available. Edison Park amenities continue to grow. The current township team of elected officials, including Zach, uh, and employees are working well together. Importantly, our township fiscal position is very strong due to conservative spending, thoughtful planning, and aggressive pursuits of grant monies. Personally, I'm a 1983 graduate of Edison High School and Ohio State with a master's from Miami. I married my high school sweetheart, Tina. Together we raised Zach and Nicholas, who both graduated from Ohio State and, and Edison. This is a great high school, and I'm proud to serve such a fantastic community. Professionally, I've owned an architectural firm on the square for over 30 years, designing buildings throughout Northern Ohio. I am pleased to have been offered to, to be able to offer free architectural design work for many community projects, including several here at Edison, including the Fieldhouse. As a township trustee, I will continue to work hard representing the best interests of the residents of Milan Township, and I humbly ask for your vote. Thank you, and the challenger in this race, Greg Cumston. Hello, my name is Greg Cumston. It's my pleasure to be here today. Thank you for hosting this wonderful event. Um, I feel I'm qualified for township trustee position for several reasons. One is um, I, I grew up on a farm, I have lots of experience with roads and drainage issues, uh, culvert tiles, things like that. Also during that period, it was shortly after I graduated, was in, during college, I picked up my commercial driver's license, which would allow me to, if one of our township crew is sick, to actually hop in the truck and do that. I, I do that for my own properties that I have and would gladly do that for the township as well. Um, moving on, um, I've been a rental, rental property owner for over 22 years now. Um, so that's familiarized me with building maintenance, property maintenance, parking lot maintenance, plumbing, electrical issues, very knowledgeable about all those things. Um, many, many of you may recognize me from Village drive through My wife and I have owned that for 11 years. Um, that's been an a interesting process for us um, when traded for the world. There I learned a lot about employee management. We have uh, employees that vary from seasonally from uh, 10 to 15 employees there. Um, especially during COVID, to keep a business open through COVID, it was it was pretty intense. Um, and so during 2021 and 2020 as well, um, supply demand issues was huge. Uh, that was a big thing. All these things um, have helped me become more knowledgeable and the person I am today. Thank you. Thank you. And we want to get into the questions. So does any students have any questions they'd like to ask at this time? Come on up. Anyone that wants to ask a question, you guys can sit in this area. We're going to, we're going to get to as many questions as possible. So for each student speaking, please give your name, your grade, and your question. We'll start with you. Uh, so I'm Jackson Michaelis. I'm a junior at our high school. Uh, my question is, recently the levy for a new school had failed with 82% of the community voting against it. Uh, what is your outlook on this issue? What is your outlook on Edison School's levy issue? And we're going to start with you, Zach. Uh, well, I think that the, the proposal that was presented uh, in, what would that have been, March, April, um, the, the voters spoke, and that, that's not what they think is, you know, that was a lot of money to, to make what needs to happen happen. And um, I think that the, the, the voters, you know, just don't think that the, I, I don't know if it's the separate campuses or um, the amount or what, what, the, what the big issue is, but uh, I think that was, the, the voters are very clear that that's not what they uh, expect to, to see for uh, moving, moving the school forward for the next 100 years. 
Just move the microphone down to Dan. Well, I, I feel the schools are uh, such an important part of our community. Uh, the, they, they, they reflect the health and prosperity of our community. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I guess we're all products of, of this school system. Uh, our two boys, you know, one's a aerospace engineer with NASA, the other's a trust guy with uh, J.P. Morgan. So all of you can pretty much do what you want to do with a Edison High School graduation. Uh, having said that, I do recognize that the, uh, the buildings need some work, uh, but similar to, similar to what Zach said, uh, I think uh, the, uh, the, the ask was obviously uh, more than the community wanted to, uh, to uh, vote for. So I hopefully that these decisions are school board decisions, and uh, hopefully they come up with another plan that gains the community support so we can uh, continue to support our schools the way they deserve to be supported. Gotcha, Greg, same question on school levy. Okay. So um, my feelings on that is, is the schools are one of the best places you can put money. Um, investing in our future, you are our future. Um, that being said, we're also entering some, some financially unstable times right now. And um, I really hope that the school board can come up with a plan that works. Um, everybody wants the state to come in and, and get more money from the state. I think right now we're at 27% on new buildings. Um, many buildings 20 years ago, they were, they were funded close to 60, 70%. Um, so the big thing is, is uh, we're looking for that the needle in the haystack when it comes to how to finance new buildings because especially in Milan and Berlin Heights we do need new buildings and uh, new buildings for students is money well spent in my book. Thank you. We're going to pass that microphone to Mary on the school levy issue. I agree with uh, the three other candidates here that that was a lot to ask for schools but I'm not so sure that this is just my feeling on it so you have Berlin Heights and you have Milan, and I know Berlin Heights wants their schools, and I know Milan wants their schools, and putting them all together may have been an issue. I did hear people talk about that. I know the state doesn't fund like it used to fund. I do know through experience in other places that to, to um, actually add a new building or new buildings is cheaper and more economical than repairing what you have and I don't think a lot of people understand that. Um, these buildings are old. I guess the people just felt that it was too much money and maybe not enough information. I know that I was reading up on it last minute and I did have questions but I should have attended more meetings. Um, just a quick follow-up rebuttal. Do you support um, the levy as is, or would you support a different type of levy for new schools? Uh, simple yes or no and a quick explanation why for all candidates. I, I think I would support a different levy with more information. I don't think there was <coughs> enough information out there, and I think it happened so quickly, too. Okay. Zach, same question. Do you support new school levy, yes or no? Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of too much of a hypothetical. I, I, I will be honest, I did not support what was presented at the last one. Um, I just felt like it was too much for what, um, you know, keep, keeping things separate and, um, you know, so, but I, I do understand the importance of, of, of new facilities or facilities for, for the kids to learn and so um, I'm not against them, but uh, I was not for the last. Okay. Dan, same question, support for school levies? Well, I certainly support the schools and I also support uh, working on buildings, I'm fond of that as well. Uh, but. I, I think the school board needs to kind of go back to the drawing board, come up with uh, with another plan, um, perhaps a little cheaper, and uh, explain it more thoroughly to the uh, uh, the residents, and then I'll, I'll make my decision at that time, just like everybody else will. So my comment's going to closely echo the other three candidates. Um, the, the answer is yes. Um, you can't go wrong with money on schools. However, we need to, the school board, it's up to them to come up with a workable plan to make that all work. Um, and uh, that's a process. It's a long process. Thank you. And we have our next student question. Good morning. My name is Nadia Cantelli, and I'm a senior in Mr. Collins' political science class. And this morning, I actually have two questions for our candidates. But I will lead with, may I ask you what made you want to get involved with local politics? Is there a reason you picked the specific office that you are running for? So what made you get involved in local politics? And we're going to start with you, Dan. 
Well, I've always been involved in uh, community service in Milan, starting with the Chamber of Commerce 25, 30 years ago. And, and then as, as our kids grew up, I was involved in Little League coaching and, and uh, Cub Scouts and, and various other community service. So I do believe in community service. Uh, this just happens to be as the as the kids moved away. This was my uh, my attempt at some grown up community service. Uh, I moved to uh, run for the township trustee position uh, because I felt I had a lot to offer for the for the township, and uh, I've really enjoyed serving our serving our community. So I look forward to continuing. Thank you, Greg. Same question. Why did you want to get involved? So I've been on the board of, of for Erie County Farm Bureau, Board of Trustees for 17 years. Prior to that, I was in a young farmer seminar um, uh, in Southern Ohio, and and the seed was planted there almost 25 years ago for me to get involved in politics. Um, many of you know my four kids. Um, similar to Dan, my time is opening up a little bit, and the time is right for me to do that, um, to get involved, and I just want to give back to the community. Also learn how how the government works on a local level so I can pass that information on to not only my kids but, but anybody else I see um, in, in my daily path. Thank you. Uh, we're going to pass that microphone off to the other side of the table. Uh, Mary, what made you want to get involved in local politics? I got involved... Um, Mary, can you just hold the microphone a little closer? I'm sorry. Here. I got involved almost accidentally. I started in uh, government in 2000 and from the time I was 18 I voted every time there was an issue or a ballot. And I never thought much of it. I did my homework and I voted. And when I started in government in 2000, I was truly amazed how much I enjoyed it, learning about the Ohio Revised Code, the laws, utilities, finance of government, um, um, taxpayer dollars, how it's spent, how it should be spent. And I just have been watching lately and I'm not, I'm not, feeling like taxpayer dollars are being spent the way they should be spent. And I do have an accounting degree, and I do have some ideas, and I look forward to hopefully being elected and being able to get that information out with some transparency because it's something everybody can learn from. Thank you, Zach. Same question. What made you get involved in local politics? Yeah, I think I, I alluded to it in my opening statement, but just you know, my mom being involved in different things growing up, it definitely planted that seed. Um, and as I, when I moved back, uh, I started working at Erie County and got started learning a little bit about the government and the expenditures and the budgeting process and all that stuff. And um, so when the, the fiscal officer at the township was uh, retiring uh, th at the end of his term, I thought what a, a good opportunity for me, uh, pretty young at the time, to, to get, get some experience uh, as a local official uh, and really <coughs> After doing it for eight years, I think townships are are perfect for my views on things. It's a very grassroots uh, kind of smaller <coughs> operation that you get a lot done with a little amount of money, and I think that that's very important. Um, and I think the uh, for the national leaders and stuff uh, could could learn a lot from township governments. Thank you. And we're going right on to our next student question. Dane Keller, I am a junior, and my question is that for a long time, Milan and Berlin Heights have rooted their economies in history and tourism, specifically Thomas Edison, as we know. Our local businesses, too, have been a mainstay for our communities, but to see new local businesses come to our town, local towns, would seem difficult, as people find it easier to stick with their old traditions. Are there limitations to so much investment in local tourism and a new favorite business. In other words, when weighing the benefits and costs of local of low gross model that historic Milan is renowned for, does this remain best for us in the modern age? So the question was be like economic development, how do we get new businesses in here? So economic development. So what are your how are you gonna prioritize economic development while also respecting the history of Milan's business? Is that fair to say? Okay. We'll start with you, Greg. That's kind of a, that's a very good question. Um, so economic development, everyone wants economic development, right? Um, growth is a good thing. Um, however, most people in my island township live here because they like how it is. Um, that's not saying that, that growth is bad, um, and we need growth. Everybody needs growth. Um, the, the, the businesses around the square are, seem to be doing well. There's a couple new ones about to open. 
Um, so I, I think uh, I think growth is is good, but we need to kind of watch so we don't lose the integrity of what Milan and Milan Township are. Thank you. We're going to pass that microphone to Mary. Same question. <clears throat> How are you going to prioritize economic development while respecting Milan's roots? Well, in Milan, if you walk around the square, there's really not a lot of openings for businesses. Businesses that have been there have been there for a long time. We host quite a few antique uh, businesses, and they're not going anywhere. Um, we've got a couple restaurants, and they're not going anywhere, so we don't have a lot of room for growth. However, what has been going on in the village is we do have a village square, which a lot of places don't have, and we're lucky to have that. And they are putting on programs and activities there that at least will bring people to Milan. And people, while they're there, can see the historic value and the historic um, places that we do have. So by continuing to showcase what we do have, maybe that'll bring more in. Thank you. Zach, same question. How do you prioritize economic development while respecting Milan's roots? Yeah, well, uh, I guess I'm kind of in a unique position at the county. One of my jobs is uh, working in economic development. So um, one, of, one of those ways, and uh, if you've read the paper in the last couple of uh, months, is the, there's different tax incentives that allow for, uh, you know, in Milan Township in particular, we, we save, we historically have saved those for very big projects um, to to help start that growth. Um, so the, the Love's Travel Center is, is coming uh, just right there by the turnpike, and that's gonna open up some, some sewer that hasn't been available uh, that, far, that far south. And so that, that will provide for opportunities for other businesses to come. And so, you know, I, I think by, by using some of those tools in the toolbox that are, are available for, for big developments, uh, we, can, we can help facilitate some growth that otherwise might not happen. Thank you, Dan. Same question. How do you prioritize economic development while respecting Milan's roots? Well, I'm committed to uh, maintaining our agricultural and residential identity while also balancing commercial development. As Zach mentioned, uh, commercial development is a locally controlled thing we, through our zoning process. Uh, Milan Township has zoned uh, basically Route 250 as a commercial corridor. And over the past 10 or 12 years, we're, we're going to realize about $80 million worth of investment on on Route 250 between several major projects that the township got involved in, supported, negotiated these TIF and, and, and abatement agreements in the best interest of Milan Township. So that significant growth, growth is going to help our community at the same time keep it out on 250 and, and, and maintain our, our, uh, the rest of our community's feel. Thank you. I just want to remind everybody, we're here at the Berlin Milan Political Debate here at Edison High School. It's brought to you by BJSU Fire Lenses Program. It is available, uh, or will be available, at the Register's YouTube page and SandusskyRegister.com. At this time, we're going to go to the rapid fire round. Candidates will have 30 seconds to respond and an opportunity to rebut at 15 seconds. And we're going to get to our next student question. All right, my name is Gabriel Diamond. I'm a junior here at the Edison High School. My question is, in the case of necessary borrowing for large-scale projects, what criteria will you use to determine the appropriateness of taking on debt? Thank you. Uh, how will you take on debt for large-scale projects? We'll start with you, Mary. The ability to pay back what you are borrowing. I mean, you have to see what you have in your funds. It's governmental budgetary fund accounting, uh, which means each fund has a source of revenue coming in and a source of expenses going out, and it's only for that fund. Um, to make sure that you have the money to pay it back, and if you don't, downscale it to a, to a payment plan that you can afford. Gotcha. Zach, same question. How are you taking on debt with large-scale projects? Yeah, I, I know the township uh, has been very good at getting grants for some of the, the big projects that we want to do. Uh, right before I started my term, the, there was a fire levy that was passed. I think our fire department's our most expensive operation at the township. Uh, new apparatus, new trucks are close to a half a million dollars, at least, depending on what you're getting. Uh, so we've kind of used that, that uh, fund to, to grow uh, over the course of five years and allows us to buy, buy that, you know, save up to buy the equipment. Um, so in my mind, I would prefer to con continue that way. Dan, your uh, priorities on taking on debt with large-scale projects? Well, I agree, I agree with our fiscal officer, and that's how we've operated since I've been a trustee. We paid cash. Uh, we have not taken on any debt. Those fire trucks, there's actually been a couple of them since I've been trustee. They're well over half a million dollars each. Uh, we save up, we recognize, we plan when we need one, 
and we save up that money when we need a fire truck and by paying cash we actually get a discount on the fire truck so uh, we have not taken on any debt thank you Greg same question about debt and large-scale projects so some debt is good but but in this case I don't think we want to have a whole lot of debt um, especially with interest rates where they are today um, Milan Township has historically done a very good job with grants and, and of course there has been some fire levies and things like that um, but uh, I would not entertain the idea of taking on debt for the township because I don't think that would be fiscally responsible. Thank you. We're getting to our next student question. Hi, my name is Anastasia Danner and I'm a junior. And my question is, the Burlington community is surrounded by and its, con and its economy is largely built on agriculture. Our farmers are vital and essential to this small town region. Being in the middle of harvest season, we see the amount of tractors, combines, and other farming and harvesting equipment on our small town roads. Do you have any ideas on making both young and old drivers more conscious on our roads in hopes of keeping our farmers and drivers safe? Thank you. So traffic safety as it applies to agricultural vehicles? Okay. And we're going to start with you, Zach. Uh, oddly enough, uh, as I was running, I think on Monday, that... <coughs> A, a big combine was coming down uh, down our new bike path that we have from here down to the to, to the township building and so I think that that is definitely one of those things in the last five five years or so that uh, the, the township has done uh, through a grant to to get the get get those berms for the safety of our, our athletes for sure um, and so I think that's that, that's been important and something that, that we have have accomplished Dan, same question along those same lines that the grant that Zach was talking about uh, that was a, the, the bike path has been an eight or ten year process uh, the grant that uh, the first step was to get ODOT to spend eight hundred thousand dollars widening 113 then the township was uh, successful in getting a three hundred fifty thousand dollar grant from the Ohio Department of Natural Resources and uh, to con complete the path and so uh, safety is is a, is a high priority I think everybody just needs to slow down and you can recognize combine and give it some weight Greg, same question. So from personal experience, when the bike path went in from Milan to the high school, it, it, it's terrific for moving big equipment down the highway. Um, the machine we have now is about 18 and a half feet wide, and, and we can use all of it and still stay in our lane. However, the biggest single thing relies on for farm safety on rural roads starts with you guys. Let your parents know, hey, it's harvest season. You need to be careful. There's flashing lights. If you see us at the triangular SMV sign, slow down. Um, because that stuff is big, it's heavy, and you don't want to hit it. It's not going to end well. Thank you. Uh, Mary, same question. I think it's a little different in the village of Milan. We have basically two roads that combines or large equipment can come down. They're both state routes. Um, they're just your average lane, so you're going to have to move over, slow down, give them the right of way. They are larger. We do have the new sidewalk that does go from the school all the way out to Old State, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Old State Road to help if you're a pedestrian. And we have sidewalks in the village of Milan, which is something the township does not have. <clears throat> we're we'll get to our next student question. Uh, hello, my name is Eli Gibson, otherwise known as Salem. I'm a junior here, and uh, my question is. The duties of trustees include making sure the community cemeteries are mowed and maintained. The graves themselves, I think I read somewhere, fall under odd laws pertaining to maintenance. It's sad to see such historic gravestones in such bad shape. What can we do? How can we maintain our cemeteries to the best of our ability? Mm -hmm. We're going to start with you, Dan. Okay, so just to clarify one thing before we talk about township cemeteries, most of us think about the, the big cemetery in Milan. That's actually its own entity. There's a township or a, a cemetery association for Milan that takes care of that. If something ever happens to that association, the township would end up taking care of that cemetery as well. So the township does take care of several cemeteries that are uh, no longer active outside in the township. Uh, we, we do try to maintain those uh, and, and be respectful of those that are, that are buried there. Uh, there is a uh, cemetery grant that's new to the state house that is uh, available for some maintenance of the cemetery. Thank you, Greg. Qu same question on cemetery maintenance. Um, so uh, cemeteries, obviously, we want to pay our respects to, to those that have passed and been there before. 
Um, so the township does take care of the, the rural cemeteries, the ones outside of Milan in the township. Um, the, the, uh, the township guys only have so much time though, and, and so this is one thing actually I've thought about because I have heard comments about some of the cemeteries, is, is perhaps <laughs> one of the uh, groups here at the school would be interested in, in, in helping make sure those things are in top-notch shape. More on a volunteer basis, maybe not students, but maybe members of the community. Um, to, to keep those things in good shape. Thank you. Uh, Mary, same question on cemetery maintenance. Milan does not uh, have any cemetery in their, um, in their jurisdiction, but when I went to Leadership Ashland this past year for that program, our service community was to clean a cemetery. We went in with um, cleaning supplies. You have to be careful <coughs> because a lot of it is marble, a lot of it is older, and we were able to put cleaner on it, scrub it, rinse it, and we really did make some headway. We got large areas done, but again, it could be Boy Scout groups, Eagle Scouts, Girl Scouts. It may have to be a community project, but it doesn't take long. Thank you, Zach. Same question on cemetery maintenance. Yeah, one of my famous lines as fiscal officer is, "I just pay the bills." Um, so, I, you know, while, while I definitely recognize the importance of, of, you know, making sure that the the lasting home for these individuals is is well kept. Um, I can't say that I put a lot of thought into into the best ways of doing that, um, but I just pay the bills. So, <laughs> thanks. We're gonna try to squeeze in one, uh, one more after this, maybe two more questions. So, if the kids, we, we're gonna try to get as many questions in here. So, we'll go to the next student question. My name, my name is Quentin Cox. Uh, I'm a junior here at Edison High School. Uh, you may be aware of the lack of bus drivers available to get students not only to and from after, to, to and from school, but also to get them to after school events. Do you think that there is a solution to this problem that either you or those you can connect with at higher levels can do about this issue that's affecting us? Thank you. What are we going to do about the bus driver shortage? So uh, we'll start with you, Greg. Um, so the bus drivers, it's, a, it's kind of a thankless uh, job, right? Um, the, uh, my seventh grader, he rides the bus um, and uh, says it gets pretty wild on there sometimes. Um, you hear about things uh, that go on there, so it's not something that people are jumping out to do. Um, so um, that being said, you know, more money always makes things good. You, you can offer more money, but moreover, try and calm things down on the buses when you're on the bus, if you're on a bus, so it doesn't get out of control, and, and want those drivers, keep, to keep those drivers in their jobs, rather than, than having them quit because they can't take it. Thank you. Uh, to you, Mary, what are we gonna do about uh, the bus driver shortage here at the school district? I don't know if it, it, it could be a plan to, uh, for start and end times for the school and get more kids on a bus, so you're making less runs, so you would need less bus drivers. I'm not sure what the schedules are with the schools here. I've been uh, removed from this for 10 years. But maybe it's a, maybe a scheduling issue could help out some. I'm not sure if you can have elementary and middle school kids on the bus together. It's kind of new to me, so I realize it's a problem. Thank you. Uh, Zach, same question about the bus driver shortage. Yeah, with the uh, track season quickly approaching, I definitely recognize that issue cue as we sit there waiting for, wait, waiting for meets to start. Um, but you know, it, yeah, it's it's tough. I you know, in the, the job environment the way it is right now, uh, it's it's definitely hard to find people to want to do some of these some of these jobs. I think people are finding it across the county, at, in state that it's just it's hard to fill them. So um, whether it's it's more money, uh, obviously the hours are kind of set, so it's difficult to uh, find that solution. Thank you, Dan. Same question. Well, as a junior high football coach, I certainly have realized the bus driver shortage. We now play double headers, which made for a very long day with uh, both teams on one bus, which barely squeeze in. Uh, and so uh, my, my suggestion to the school board would be to uh, double the pay for uh, bus drivers running extracurricular routes. Thank you. We're going to squeeze in at least this question right here. Uh, my name is Zoe Corfman. I'm a junior here at Edison High School. And my question is, if the village received a $1 million uh, grant to use anywhere in the village, what would you use it for and why? Thank you. Well, sorry, you, Mary. How are you going to spend a $1 million if you get it? 
I would, my first suggestion would be the village hosts uh, their own electric water and sewer plants and they are all in need of upgrades. Some have been started, some are long term. It would update some very necessary old equipment to keep us running electric water and sewer and affordably. Thank you, Zach. Same question. How would you spend a million dollars? I don't know if I have a specific answer as to what we would do today. I would just. Uh, encourage the trustees to make sure that it's on um, long-term things not uh, not one time or you know increasing salaries a significant amount because that makes it uh, a permanent thing going forward so uh, just like a, a one-time expense that can really create a, a windfall uh, the town hall is a very expensive building to upkeep so uh, different things that, that might be needed there uh, just to so that we can get those problems solved um, on on grant funds. Thank you. Dan, how would you spend a million dollars? Well, one of the things that's been mentioned is this Homestead Farms development where the township negotiated to get that sewer extended to Homestead Farms. For uh, just about a million dollars, we can extend that the rest of the way through the township down to Route 13, opens up 400 additional acres for commercial development. That $80 million of commercial development I mentioned, uh, based on a $250,000 house, that's like 320 houses. So diversifying our our property tax base would be good for our future. Thank you. Same question, Greg. Um, so a million dollars is a lot of money, but in today's times, it's not as much as it used to be. Um, but whatever I would do with that, I'd make sure that it was something that a project that benefited the whole community, whether it's it's extending the sewer line or, or improving, making improvements to the town hall, or maybe some more improvements to Edison Park. Um, who knows what those may be? Um, I'd have to get in there and really look and see what we need, and, and I'd probably talk a lot to uh, the, the taxpayers to see recommendations and then make a decision after that. Thank you. Uh, we have one last student question, and this question is just for the mayor's candidate. So we're just going to add, just, the, uh, just Mary's going to answer this question. Rory Conrad, Jr. Throughout the more recent years, especially after COVID, many local businesses have been losing a substantial amount of funds in business, especially seen in local museums like the Thomas Edison Birthplace Museum, going from an average of 100 people a day down to barely 20. Going forward, what will be done to keep local business prosperous? That had to be the last one, huh? Um, I'm not all that familiar with the birthplace and when it's open. I don't know if it's lesser hours that it's open or if they don't have the volunteers working. I'm not that familiar with it. Um, I'm not sure how the advertising for that goes. I'm not really sure what the problem is, so I'm not really able to answer that question. I apologize. And I know we have to finish before the bell, so candidates, I know you have 60 seconds, but we want to uh, just make your closing statements as succinct as possible, and we're going to start with you, Zach. All right. Yeah, just thank, again, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I, I challenge you guys as, as you uh, you know, grow and get start your careers to to be involved. I mean, you, you have decisions in in the elections, and um, hopefully someday you'll you'll see your name on that ballot to to help help your community. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I believe Milan Township is running smoothly and efficiently. Um, the future in Milan Township is bright, but it's a little complicated. I think I've demonstrated the leadership to uh, to guide us through this this future. I'll continue to work hard representing the township and uh, uh, appreciate your vote. So the Milan community has been great for my family and I, and I in turn just want to give back and help to try and keep our community strong. Um, just a, a quick recap, I too am a 93 graduate of Edison High School, lifelong township resident, uh, family minded with small town values. I live in Milan Township with my wife and four children. Um, like I said before, I'm on Erie County Farm Bureau and been on its board for 17 years. I'm familiar with building road and drainage maintenance. I am a member of the Milan Chamber of Commerce and a director there. Um, many of you might see me as uh, organizer of the Tuesday nights cruising on the square. I've got 13 years in Milan Cub Scout Pack 215. Um, I am involved in the community. I'm invested in this community through my holdings and I am committed to our community. And if given the chance, I will put my all into this township trustee um, election and, and roll. Thank you. And Mary? Uh, thank you for the opportunity. 
My, uh, again, I have a Facebook page, Move Myland Forward, Mary for Mayor, and I do chronicle my concerns on there, and I hope that you'll follow it because you can see what some of my questions are, and someday you will be voting, and maybe this will help you. We have, um, Village of Myland is a little different where their money comes from, and it's ta taxpayer dollars, and someday you'll be paying taxes if you work now and you want your money spent the correct way. Um, there needs to be transparency in government. You need to know what your government is doing. You need to be able to ask questions and have those questions answered. You need to, if you're paying utilities, you need to know why your rates are going up. Because that is your money that you're paying out, and if you don't ask questions, then things slip by. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't you give the candidates a round of applause? Yes, thank you. But also, give yourselves a round of applause, because you guys did awesome putting this together, asking the questions, um, making the candidates feel welcome. There are refreshments. So give you guys a, a round of applause for yourselves, please. Thank you. We want to thank again Edison High School, uh, Mr. Collins for helping put this together, Mr. Goodwin, our sponsors today. Um, uh, Baker on the Square and Burnham Orchards, thank you again so much. And remember that this will be available at SanDiscoRestaurant.com on our YouTube page. Once again, I'd also like to thank BJSU Violence for sponsoring in schools uh, debate. And we want to come back next year. There's going to be some county races, so if you guys will have us, we'll be back. So once again, thank you all for putting this together. We really appreciate it. Thank you.